Welcome. Today we shall be looking at the pharmacology of anti-cancer drugs. Cancer or malignant diseases account for a high proportion of deaths in industrialized or first world countries. The treatment of anti-cancer drugs aims to give palliation, induce remission, and if possible provide cure for cancer. Over the times, there have been a number of treatment options for cancer. Before we go any further, we need to understand what is cancer and how it develops. Cancer occurs after normal cells have been transformed into neoplastic cells through alteration of their genetic material and abnormal expression of certain genes. These cancerous or neoplastic cells exhibit chromosomal abnormalities and the loss of their differentiated properties. And overall, these changes lead to uncontrolled cell division and many result in the inversion of previously unaffected organs through a process known as metastasis. When treating cancer, we do it with three different aims. We aim to give palliation, for example, provide a prompt relief of unpleasant symptoms such as superior vena cava obstruction from mediastinal tumors. The second aim is to induce remission so that all macroscopic and microscopic features of the cancer disappear, although the disease is known to be persistent. And lastly, we aim to provide cure for which all the cells of the clone must be destroyed. When discussing the pharmacology of anti-cancer drugs, we have to classify these drugs. Anti-cancer drugs are classified according to the chemical structure and resource of the drug or according to the biochemistry mechanisms of anti-cancer action and lastly according to the cycle or the phase specificity of the drug. So the first classification is based on the chemical structure and resource whereby we have drugs for example alkylating agents, anti-metabolites, antibiotics, plant extracts, hormones, and many others. The second classification is based on the biochemistry mechanism of anti-cancer action. And in this classification, we classify anti-cancer drugs to drugs which block nucleic acid biosynthesis, drugs which directly influence the structure and function of the DNA. And then we have drugs which interfere transcription and block the RNA synthesis drugs which interfere with protein synthesis and its function, and lastly, drugs which influence hormone homeostasis. And the last classification of anti-cancer drugs is based on the cycle or phase specific of the drug. In this classification, we have two types of anti-cancer drugs, that is cell cycle non-specific agents and cell cycle specific agents. Let's have a brief overview of the basic concept of cell generation cycle. The cycle of cell replication includes the M phase, which is the mitotic phase. Then we have the G1 phase, which occurs before the S phase, known as the GAP1 phase. And then we have the S phase. In this S phase, we have DNA synthesis occurring. And the G2 phase or the GAP2 phase is the period after the S phase. So let's start with the first classification of anti-cancer drugs based on the cell psychospecificity. In this case, we have cell psychospecific agents, which are the drugs acting during a specific phase of the cell cycle. Having looked at the cell cycle, we have drugs which work on the S phase. Those are anti-metabolites and topoimerase inhibitors. Drugs which work on the mitotic phase or the M phase are vinca alkaloids and taxins. And lastly, drugs which work on the G2 phase is like bleomycin. On the other hand, we have cell cycle non-specific agents which are active throughout the cell cycle. And in this class, we have alkylating agents, platinum compounds, and antibiotics.
What is the mechanism of anti-cancer drugs? Anti-cancer drugs can work based on the five different mechanisms. That is, either they can block nucleic acid, that is the DNA or RNA biosynthesis. They can also work by directly destroying the DNA, inhibiting DNA reproduction, or work by interfering with transcription and block the RNA synthesis, or interfering with protein synthesis and its function. And lastly, these anti-cancer drugs can work by influencing hormone homeostasis drugs which block nucleic acid biosynthesis. The main class of drugs in this classification is antimetabolites. Under antimetabolites, we have drugs like folic acid antagonists which work by inhibiting dihydrofolate reductase, for example methotrexate. And another antimetabolite is pyrimidine antagonists or pyrimidine compounds which are working by inhibiting thymidylate synthetase, for example, fluorouracil. Also, they can work by inhibiting DNA polymerase, like cytarabine. Another antimetabolite used in cancer treatment is purine antagonist. Purine antagonists work by inhibiting interconversional purine nucleotide, and an example of this one is metacaptopurine. And lastly, we have ribonucleoside diphosphate reductase antagonist, that is hydroxyurea, which is also used in sickle cell treatment. Another type of anti-cancer drugs work by interfering protein synthesis, that is antitubulin, for example, vinca alkaloids and taxins. This work by interfering with the function of ribosome, harringtonins, and influence the amino acid supply of L asparaginase and also they can bind with tubulin destroying the spindle to produce mitotic arrest. And then we have drugs which work by interfering with transcription and blocking RNA synthesis. An example of this one is doxorubicin. Semantic cancer drugs work by influencing the structure and functions of the DNA. An example of this one is alkylating agents, for example, meclorethamine, cyclophosphamide, and theopeta. And we also have platinum analogs, which also work by influencing the structure and function of this, the DNA. An example of a platinum analog is cisplatinum. Antibiotics also like bleomycin and mitomycin C can also work in influencing this structure. And lastly, we have topoimerase inhibitors like camptothecin and podophyllotoxins. And lastly, we have drugs, anti-cancer drugs, which influence hormone homeostasis. These drugs work by binding to the hormone receptors to block the action of the sex hormones, which result in an inhibition of a tumor growth. Examples of drugs working by hormone homeostasis interference are estrogens and estrogen antagonists. We have androgens and androgen antagonists, progest progestogen drugs, glucocorticoid drugs, gonadotrophin-releasing hormone inhib inhibitors like lup luprolide and goserelin. And we also have aromatase inhibitors like aminoglutamide and anatrazone.